From steak to pork, chicken to fish, animal protein often takes center stage at the North American dinner table. But as resources shrink and populations grow, it may be time to look for a new sustainable choice. Insects, in fact, are, are a superfood. Uh, you know, compared to an equivalent amount of uh, beef or, or pork or chicken. So when we're thinking about a world which is diminishing in its resources, but it is growing in its human population, uh, insects are very well positioned to be a great source of protein. They take drastically less land, less water, and less feed when being produced. You can actually produce insects year-round. There's tremendous potential for, for this uh, to become an industry. By the year 2050, the world will be home to an excess of 9 billion people. And so we're already seeing this, this gradual shift to thinking about uh, insects as, a, as, a, as the food of the future. On this special presentation of EATS, we dig in to edible insects. In North America, eating insects is more of a dare than a meal a food meant to shock the average consumer. But in many other parts of the world, insect consumption, or entomophagy, is a delicious part of the daily diet. It's becoming an industry in many countries, especially the developing countries and, and in many countries in Asia. Uh, for instance, Thailand is now known as the, uh, the, the country where uh, eating insects uh, as, as edible foods is, is becoming a cult and also uh, uh, you know, making a name in, in terms of preparing uh, dishes that have very tasty insects. Uh, in China, for instance, uh, cockroaches are act actually, uh, certain species of cockroaches are, are considered as delicacies and they sell them in, you know, as, as preserved food um, and, and, and some children would actually eat it as a snack. Honestly, all insects taste different. So I would say the crickets um, have a bit more of like an almondy flavor, um, whereas the palm weevils have a bit of a sweet taste to them. Um, and they're also, the texture is different. It also depends how they're cooked. So in many places, you'll find them um, sauteed or stir fried. In some societies, they might be fried or grilled, but they do taste quite good. The word that describes bug consumption is entomophagy, and it's, ex it's extremely um, prevalent throughout the world. Uh, in excess of 2.1 billion people around the world consume insects daily as part of a regular diet. Uh, as North Americans, we just don't think about it. A group of Canadian students are trying to bring the bug craze to North America. In 2013, five MBA students from McGill University hatched a plan. They wanted to build bug farms to address the epidemic of global food insecurity. It was this commercialized concept of micro livestock that got them into the finals of the prestigious Halt Prize competition. It's a partnership between the Halt International Business School and the Clinton Global Initiative. Every year, former U.S. President Bill Clinton calls to action students from around the world to help create a social enterprise focusing on a, on, on a global challenge. Uh, this year, President Clinton chose food security. So we were looking for a social enterprise that was well positioned to address food insecurity in urban slums. And we came across a really interesting fact that 2.1 billion people across the world consume insects as a part of their diet in some way. And so we found that there were two problems with that. One is that they're hand harvested, and the second is that insects are only seasonally available. And both of those things make them largely inaccessible to society's most underserved communities. So our idea was to stabilize the supply of insects by farming them. In 2013, nearly 11,000 teams from around the world uh, competed. Uh, we're talking about 300 universities from over 100 different countries. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, the eternal pessimist, if you will, or realist, and I thought that, you know, we had, we had a strong presentation, a strong idea, but there were others that were equally as competitive. And to hear, uh, you know, President Clinton announce the team of five from McGill University was just a moment I'll never forget. From McGill University, Aspire. The McGill team won one million dollars to take their company, Aspire Food Group, into production. Our corporate headquarters are in Montreal, which is where we're from, and uh, our initial operations are, are in the state of Oaxaca, which is southern Mexico. We're working with a local university there, and, and we're in the process now of establishing our first industrial processing facility, um, which will be located in southern Mexico, as well as interesting opportunities in West Africa, um, and in fact the U.S. as well has, has recently come on our radar as another attractive market. We do hope to distribute the appropriate technologies to local farmers so that they can also farm insects and sell them back to us 
and we will then be able to process them and sell them to a distributor. You can actually produce insects year-round, uh, which is good because uh, in many of the developing countries, they eat insects from the wild. So with, with farming uh, you know, and producing insects as, as an industry, I think we can certainly see a, a huge change in terms of uh, the cost of, of bringing that up and also uh, producing much more uh, genetically stable forms of, of insects uh, that could be uh, selective for taste and could, could be selective for size or protein content and so on. Now I'm not advocating genetically modified foods but certainly uh, there, there's tremendous potential uh, for, for this uh, to become an industry. Entomophagy may be growing overseas but what will it take for insect products to make it into mainstream North America markets? History has shown that the introduction of new cuisines may only require a shift in perspective. 30, 40 years ago, the idea of eating raw fish in North America was considered vile. Um, and it took a very creative chef um, you know, in, in San Francisco who developed the California roll by you know, putting the rice on the inside and, and then and, you know, removing the fish. And then all of a sudden it became a big hit. And now you can't go two blocks in a North American city like, like Calgary or Toronto or Montreal without seeing a sushi restaurant. With insects, the major barrier really has to do with consumer acceptance, understanding that this is now a delicacy as opposed to uh, an insect or a cockroach uh, that happens to creep up on your food. Eating insects can make a lot of sense. It takes 100 pounds of feed to produce 10 pounds of beef. 26% of the Earth's land is used to graze the 1.7 billion animals in livestock production. And meat production is on the rise. All that steak also adds up in greenhouse gas emissions. According to the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization, meat production contributes between 14 and 22 percent of all greenhouse gases pumped into the atmosphere every year. Now take that cricket. That same amount of feed to produce 10 pounds of beef can raise up to 40 pounds of insects. One gallon of water is all you need for a pound of crickets compared to 2,000 gallons of water for a cow. Less land, less water, and less gas make insects a logical choice for many. Insects are a great food source because when you compare them to traditional livestock, they have comparable amounts of protein, but often multiple times more micronutrients such as iron and calcium. So when we're thinking about a world which is diminishing in its resources, but it is growing in its human population, uh, insects are very well positioned to be a great source of protein for the world because they take drastically less land, less water, and less feed when uh, when being produced. Compared to an equivalent amount of, uh, of beef or, or pork or chicken, insects have comparable amounts of protein and up to six times the, uh, the iron, zinc and calcium along with other micronutrients. They're very high in proteins, uh, especially with the essential amino acids and so on. It's a good source and uh, for those people who are, you know, you know looking at environmental uh, friendliness, um, rearing insects or farming insects uh, really uh, is very good for, you know, in terms of avoiding greenhouse uh, gas effect and so on. We're already seeing a very significant grassroots movement occurring in the U.S. Um, you know, people that, that, are, that are, have this elevated awareness of uh, protein efficient uh, food sources. Some North American trailblazers are pushing their customers' appetites towards something new. Miru Dalwala and Vikram Vidge have placed edible insects on the menu in both their Vancouver and Seattle restaurants. I'm Miru Dalwala and I am chef and co-owner of Vidges and Rangoli restaurants in Vancouver and Shawnick restaurant in Seattle. Vidges, Rangoli and Shawnick restaurants, they're all Indian restaurants, but they're based on my own interpretation of my heritage, my Indian heritage, um, the Indian culture, and what is my artistic version of Indian food. I first read an article about uh, the idea of eating bugs and uh, talked about the value of eating insects. It grossed me out <laughs> to no end. I was like, oh, yuck. But it was intriguing. And so I started reading the article and it talked about how sustainable it is to raise insects for human consumption compared to raising a cow. Eating insects was giving you the same amount of iron and protein 
plus omega oils and fiber and it was like it was like this wonder food and I thought okay if it's you know great for the environment great for the soil they don't feel any pain when you kill them and they're healthy for you well why not if I can't do it with my confidence level in cooking well then who is going to be able to do it I ate a lot of crickets. I had to eat a ton of undercooked crickets, overcooked crickets. Um, the age of the cricket has a big thing to do with how it tastes. So I had big crickets, I had tiny crickets, and um, it took me about a month to figure out the right recipe. Crickets have a, a, they've got a foresty, nutty flavor to them. In a million years, I'm not gonna tell you that a plain cricket is, oh my God, so delicious. But then neither would I tell you in a million years that just a plain boiled chicken breast is delicious either. It's what you do with the ingredient. I introduced crickets to my Vidges menu in 2008, I believe. It was before the Olympics, and I decided to make it as mild as possible, to make it as easy feeling as possible, and the Canadian press just it, I think it was the first time, in Canada at least, that some a prominent restaurant was serving a bug on its menu and a, a, a cricket. So there was so much publicity behind it. I've got to say one thing, there was a lot of support behind it as well. From the media, there was a lot of support. I think intellectually, Vancouver was ready. I think what Vancouver loved was the philosophy behind serving the bug. I wasn't serving uh, the cricket, the bug, for um, attention seeking. And so it stayed on my menu for two years. Like it, it, it held its own. The crickets, they held their own for two years on the menu. It's important for me to introduce insects because I just don't think it's sustainable how much meat we eat. It's just not gonna work. It doesn't work for our bodies. It doesn't work for the environment. I think that a lot of people, including me at times, don't get me wrong, are in this bizarre state of denial over climate change. And, you know, on the one hand, we're fed with all this foodie television with truffles and beefsteak and foodie this and foodie that and the love of food and the love of restaurants. On the other hand, the reality is that the planet can't sustain that kind of love of food. So what I'm trying to do is promote a new alternative love of food and anything brand new is considered gross. Where was sushi 25 years ago? So if crickets and grasshoppers today are what sushi was in Vancouver or North America 25, 30 years ago, well then it's got insects have a bright future ahead of them. It's really important to promote entomophagy, which is the human consumption of insects at this point in time, because the UN estimates that by 2050 we might be 10 billion people on the earth, um, and the percentage of arable land is largely decreasing. Um, the production of traditional livestock contributes to um, greenhouse gas emissions. So it's very important at this time to look at a protein source that is nutritious and that can help feed everyone, but at the same time is extremely resource efficient.